the coast. Home Alone is a 2006 Disney film that is directed by Frank Marshall and it stars Paul Walker as the survival specialist. I believe that's what he is. Welcome to the bottom of the world, Doc. Go any further south, you'll fall off the planet. And he's taken Bruce Greenwood's character, who is this doctor who is kind of desperate to go to the Antarctic and he wants to find this rock. Wow, the first meteor from Mercury ever on Earth. So of course he wants to find it. Turn around, buddy. Translation? Uh, that'd be out. The problem is, is that this is right before the winter. And the winter out in the Arctic is insane conditions. Paul Walker's even saying, look, not only should we not really do this, the length of where they have to go, Paul Walker's like, look, I haven't done this in a while. I don't know if this is right. But of course his boss is like, shut the fuck up. We're going to do this anyways. Nobody listens to the survival specialist. Why else did you bring this guy along? There's only one way to make that trip, and that's with the dogs. The dogs. <laughs> and of course, just like Paul Walker said, they get caught in the storm, and even Bruce Greenwood falls into the water, and it's freezing. So, of course, now they have to rush back. The two of them, Paul Walker and Bruce Greenwood, might possibly have frostbite or even worse. So they have to put them in the helicopter, rush off, but they can't bring the dogs. They don't have enough weight on the helicopter for the dog. Can fly right back, bring the dogs out. I'll be back, I promise. However, the storm is worse. It's getting worse, and they won't let them fly back to get the dogs. So the dogs end up spending six months in the Arctic on their own by themselves while Paul Walker is desperately, frantically trying to find a way to get back there and save them. Now, what I thought of 8 Below was... You know, I might have some minor complaints, but overall, I did like this movie. Now, Paul Walker, I did like Paul Walker in this movie, so he's not the problem. It's more so how his boss doesn't listen to him. Now, th they say that this is inspired by true events. Inspired, not based on. So that means that a story like this did happen, but a lot of stuff was changed. Now, I don't know if his boss really didn't listen to him and just went along with this trip anyways, because if he did do that, what a fucking dumbass. At first, I thought Bruce Greenwood's character was being a little too much, like wanting to get out there. But then when you think about it, a meteor from Mercury, the first ever, I can see why he's so desperate to want to get this. You're outside of safety zone. Doc! Doc! Easy, Maya. Take it to him. What happens with these dogs, how these dogs end up getting stuck there. Watching the dogs, having to watch the dogs stranded out there and just trying to survive, relying on each other, how to get food, how to stay warm, just I find it nearly impossible that any of them would be able to survive. Like the one scene when the dogs are trying to figure out where to get food, how to get food, and of course their first target are the seagulls. I guess we're not supposed to give a shit about the seagulls because hey, they're food for the dog. How are we gonna get the dog? Nobody flies back, not in this weather. Those dogs are my family. We can't just leave them out there. I enjoyed the scenes of watching the dogs stick together and basically help each other survive. Especially the one scene where they see this dead whale and one dog's eyeing it for a, a nice good meal. But then there's some killer seal. I don't know. When it came out, it kind of freaked me out how they have to fight it off. I'm like, oh wow, this is a pretty intense scene. Which I didn't even think about until I read someone review this and they said how they don't think that this movie tonally works for both kids and adults the way that they want it to. There's a lot of scenes that are intent with the dogs and obviously I think it has to be that way to show how much of a threat and especially the fact that this is true event, yeah, you have to kind of show the danger of that. But then you have scenes like with Jason Biggs where he's being kind of overly goofy, very childish, and I like Jason Biggs. I don't hate him. I know a lot of my friends hate him. But I do understand this guy's point by saying that maybe that doesn't really go well together. Moon Bloodgood, who when I saw her, I thought she looks 
a little too familiar. I looked her up and I was like, oh yeah, she was in Terminator Salvation. She's the helicopter pilot. And I guess her and Paul Walker had a thing in the past, but it didn't really work out. So now they're just friends, but you could tell there's still feelings there. I'm like, okay, I guess you have to give them something interesting to do that doesn't involve the dogs. But ultimately, you could have just had them be a couple the whole way through. My biggest complaint, if I had to give a big complaint, would be the length. This movie is two hours long. And I have to admit, as engaging as the story was, as great as the scenes with the dogs were and how invested I was in seeing if they survived, I don't think it had to be two hours long. You could have chopped off 25 minutes, even a half hour. Especially if this is a Disney film that they're trying to say is for kids as well. Two hours. Try to get a kid to sit there and watch a two hour movie. It ain't happening. Hell, I barely could sit there and watch this for two hours. And that's not because the movie was bad, like I said. It's just after a while, there comes a point where, I don't know, I kind of got bored. You got to take chances for the things you care about. But again, I don't want to come off like I didn't like this film because there are a lot more things to like about it than not. I did like Paul Walker's performance. I did like everyone else in the film, Bruce Greenwood, Jason Big. I really enjoyed watching these dogs and just how much they had to go through to survive. I'm not that much of a dog person. I'm not even that much of an animal person, but hell, even I can appreciate watching dogs do this. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you've seen Ape Below and what you thought of it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Later. Eight Below, inspired by a true story.